Trolls Topia. Trolls Roller Tour was a great movie. Probably my favorite in the Trolls series so far. And this follow up show to it expands on the Trolls lore greatly. And so I enjoyed it much more than The Beat Goes On, even though The Beat Goes On was still a good show, simply because I like Trolls World Tour much better. And I just love the concept of different uh, music genres being tribes, like classic music, country, funk, rock, pop, all that good stuff. I'm sad that Barb from Trolls World Tour wasn't in the show, but her replacement, Val Thundershock, is pretty good. I also really like Holly Darlin. Just another fun show. Pony Life. I already said this in my review for the show, which you can check out. But the show is just a nice little filler show to fill in the gap between French Ms. Magic and the upcoming Generation 5 show for My Little Pony. It's also much better than Teen Titans Go, which I often see the show being compared to. It doesn't mock its critics or anything, and it doesn't mock the original show. Just a fun, a chibi show. You won't expect to see like grand story arcs here or a lot of lore. But the show is just a silly little comedy for kids. And there's not a lot of lore, obviously, but each character gets their own arc, which I find pretty neat. Mira, Royal Detective. I was upset when Elena of Avalor had to end, but this little show can fill in the gap, and it does so very well. It reminds me a lot of Elena of Avalor, particularly how they both have fictional kingdoms inspired by real culture, so. Uh, Elena takes place in Avalor, obviously, and inspired by Latin American culture, while Mira, Royal Detective takes place in Jalpur, which is inspired by India. And this show is a great way to teach kids about South Asian culture, particularly Indian culture. And the show does its best to be respectful to South Asians, both on screen and behind the scenes. The show can get formulaic, but it's pretty engaging by teaching critical thinking skills to kids. And, yeah. Go, go, Cory Carson. Honestly, I wasn't expecting to like this show as much as I do, but this show was amazing. Oh my gosh. The animation is beautiful. It's so cute and it looks like stop motion even though it's CGI. It's like little claymation. The show is just another wholesome good vibes preschool show, just like Trash Truck and Stillwater. Just focusing on the joys of growing up in childhood, basic everyday issues. Really cute show. Definitely check it out. It's Pony. The second best Nickelodeon show to come out this year. Another wholesome, good vibes type of show. Very calm, very British. Reminds you of something I would see on Noggin, especially Pinky Dinky Doo. Maybe because it's the art style, I don't know. But it's a nice show if you just want to relax. Just a bunch about a girl and her horse having fun, doing really wacky things. The Adventures of Paddington. I'm gonna be repeating myself like a broken record when I say this, but this show was just so cute and so calming and comforting. The thing 2020 was the best at in regards to TV animation was making a bunch of wholesome and comforting shows. Like, not lore-heavy shows or action-heavy shows, just shows that you can just vibe to and watch when you're feeling angry or upset to calm you down. And this show is no exception. I mean, who doesn't love Paddington Bear? Nick Jr. is really stepping up their game in regards to their original shows. Close enough. I loved regular shows so much when I was younger. And so I was very excited for this show, even though it got delayed over and over. Thanks a lot, Louis C.K. Gigi Quintel strikes gold again with Close Enough. It's an adult cartoon about parenting. And of course it has some vulgar jokes here and there, but it doesn't rely on all that. So it's one of the better modern adult cartoons. 
And the show actually looks good, unlike something like Brickleberry. The show is very surreal, just like regular show. And if you love regular show, definitely check the show out. And the episodes are only 11 minutes. I have a very short attention span, so I prefer 11 minute shows. And yeah, you'll love it. Cleopatra in Space. DreamWorks is doing a terrible job distributing the show. No one even has Peacock. It should have got to Netflix instead so it can have a bigger audience. Enough of my tangent. Cleopatra in Space is an underrated show that you should definitely check out. The show combines Egyptian history with futuristic science fiction elements, lovable characters, and a very compelling story arc. The show was based on a graphic novel, and I considered this to be way better than the graphic novel. Not that the graphic novel is bad, but just, you know. Here Elementary, the very first PBS kids show of the 2020s decade. And it started off with a bang. Here Elementary takes inspiration for comic books and teaches kids science in a very fun and effective way. Special mention goes to the autistic representation. Agent Gaddis is my favorite character on the show because he is a very accurate representation of what autism is. And as an autistic person myself, I feel extremely validated by him. Central Park, without a doubt the best adult cartoon of the year. It isn't gross and vulgar like many other modern adult cartoons. It's its own thing. A very compelling, funny, and heartwarming show with some great musical numbers that would that w wouldn't be out of place in a Broadway musical. Oh my gosh. We need more musical shows like this, I swear. 